for Kwanzaa ceremonially, we light a new candle. You know, we start off with we start off with um, you know, the the unity candle in the middle. You know, for uh, Umoja. You know, we move out to the to the um, red Kujichigalia, and so and so on and so forth. You know, until the whole canar is lit lit up. You know, when you have your house, you know, dark, it's 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 actually a beautiful sight. You know, to do with your family there. Um, speaking of families, I also have here, you know, representing the harvest, I have a basket. I actually have, um, you know, African cloth that's actually from Tanzania. And uh, in the basket representing the heart, both the harvest and the children in our house, you know, we just have some fruit here. You know, you can use fruit. You know, some people use corn, but just representing the first harvest. You know, um, I actually have two apples here, you know, representing our girls here. And, you know, orange representing, you know, our little boy, TJ. So, um, yeah, so uh, what I like to do is just get into the ceremony. So we do it like this every day. Habari Ghani. Yes, today is the seventh and final day of Kwanzaa. So the answer would be Imani or faith. Yeah, Imani means faith, you know, so belief in ourselves, belief in our creator, you know, just living by our spiritual principles, you know, having hope and still in hope, you know, are just all, all very, very important parts of this principle and parts of this principle we should live by. So we have our candles lit, representing all the other days of Kwanzaa, um, Umoja, Kujichugalia, um, Ujima, Ujama, Kaumba, and um, Nia. I said those two out of order, but hey, I said them. <laughs> so last but not least, um, Umani, which is faith. And as I like, you can say it with me. Imani. Orange. Which just means together. Um, so as we celebrate this final day of our Kwanzaa season, please remember we hold these principles important through our Kwanzaa season but not just through our Kwanzaa season. We hold, a, we hold these principles important all 365 days of the year. Keep these close to your heart. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. Have a good one. Love. Great stuff. All right. So, wow, Habari Ghani, y'all. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, listen, this is the final day of the Kwanzaa Collective Experience, and I'm here with some of my favorite family members, and Owl is celebrating the principle of Imani. So we're looking into what does faith mean in the context of collective? And I'm just happy to really create a bit of open space just to explore the, what that is for us. You know, and Dr. Byron Jones, we hear the song in the background, clearly sees Kwanzaa as an opportunity for opportunity for we as a people to come together and really just explore what it is to be in collective um you know so with that in mind i would love us to introduce ourselves and really just say um our name something about where we're from and maybe one area of the of your life where faith has played a big role and then just in a few sentences yeah one area of your life where faith has played a big role and that's as open as you see the see the context of faith start from there. So anyone can start. I'll start because I have to go soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trevor, go for it. Um, so my name's Trevor Blackburn. Um, I forgot what was the point you wanted to go through. So name. Yeah, name, where you're from. And also, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us where, you, where you're at as well, you know, what you do. And then an area of your life where faith plays a big role. Okay. And just to be contextual, in context of, um, of um, Kwanzaa, faith is really more dug deeply into our concept of our connection to our ancestors, a connection to ourselves, and our connection to ourselves as a people. Where do we create um, deep, deep faith in relation to those things? Okay, so my name's Trevor Blackman, and um, I run a charity um, for young people, particularly African Caribbean young people in the UK, London. So I'm based in London, also a, a consultant um, and a creative. 
And I would say the last 22 years of supporting young people, communities, all communities, all diverse communities, but mainly um, black and brown communities, that my, and this is where faith comes into it, my ancestors have always led me. Mm. Um, and I stand on their shoulders, most definitely. So those who were strong enough to survive the ship to the Caribbean, my parents originally from St. Kitts, um and work the plantations the irony of it is that my father then later on in life became a plantation manager um in St Kitts and then ran for government and was a minister as well at the agricultural minister so there's this whole cycle um within my within me within my spirit and the moment I tried to move away from that and just focused particularly on the creativity, my whole life was went in a different direction, as in my spirit. I just didn't feel right. And I had never questioned waking up in the morning to do anything when I was doing what I still do now. The moment I tried to get into something else and I was doing stuff for QVC, doing stuff for the BBC, but it wasn't it didn't have any sense of who I was and purpose. I became less of that. And I think sometimes we view things in the eyes of the present rather, rather than viewing things in the eyes of the past, which then help us move within the present. Mm. Um, so I was at my lowest point. Um, I'd lost almost everything financially. I was spoken to, and I'd say, you can say whether it was God, you can say whether it was my, my ancestors, I don't know who it was, but they lifted me up. But I had to see things from the past, not the present, in order to move through. And that was most profound and powerful. And I have never, I've never stopped, which is why I'm also very, um, I'm very, what's the word I'm searching? Yeah, I am. I'm very controlling in terms of what I put my time to because I believe time is precious. Mm. Um, and I only give it over to what I believe is making a difference, particularly for, for others, but equally myself as well. I think it's important to acknowledge that. Um, so faith is forever within me. If the spirit around me of my ancestors keep me, they drive me, they kick me up the arse when I need to be kicked up the arse and slap me around the face, let me tell you that. And that can, that can manifest itself in ways that we just don't understand. And then we realise, oh, shit, that's why. Yeah. You see, Trevor, you moved over there and then that happened. Don't do that again. Um, so that's me. Mm. Blessings, Trevor. Trevor, it, it, these spaces kill me because it's like, I don't know how many powerful stories I've heard come from you. And this is another one. Um, and this opportunity to look through this lens is, is really, really opened up something there. And I, I have not heard you talk about St. Kitts in that way before as well. So yeah, and blessings for sharing that. Yeah. Who would you like to invite into the sharing space? We have Jacqueline, Sunita and Cara on, the, on this call. I'm gonna go for my queen, Jacqueline. Queen Jacqueline, there you go, over there in Ottawa. King Trevor, you're my king, so thank you for that. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> Blessings. Oh. So I'm Jacqueline Lawrence. I live in Ottawa, Canada, born in Jamaica. Um, grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, and came to Ottawa like a, so many years ago, I can't even remember now, um, to pursue my um, post-secondary education and just loved the city and stayed and that was a divine <laughs> step in and of itself in that I was pursuing journalism at the time um, and in my current work I'm an education administrator I'm the diversity strategist for um, the largest school district in eastern Ontario which is a province in Canada and um, <clears throat> Um, we have 72,000 students and 10,000 plus staff members. And my team and I are responsible for 
transforming the culture to be equitable and inclusive for the full diversity of our student population, which includes diverse race, diverse religions, diverse sexual orientations, diverse whatever diversity that is, socioeconomics, et cetera. Mm. Um, it's exciting work. Um, I think it's the work I was born to do. And that journey has been one of faith to take me there because um, I used to work in the federal government, um, similar position. And when I made the decision to leave the federal government, it was my intention to not be in government at all. But this is, you know, school boards are somewhat um, governmental as well. Mm. But there was something about the space that called me. And in fact, it was supposed to be my testing ground to see where my, my skill sets were. And I made the decision in March 2008 that I had completed what I was assigned to do at Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. And I sent it an email to 15 friends and I said, okay, my time here is done. I'd like to explore what else life is, has for me. And that afternoon, one person sent me this job posting. Two days later, another person sent me this job posting. And by Friday, I think three persons had sent me the job posting and I pay attention to the number three. And so I started researching the organization and then I said, oh, this is interesting. And I didn't even know, but I parked it in the back of my mind. And then I said to myself, the day of the, um, the day the position was due for submissions, I think it was due at 2 p.m. and I sent in my application at 155. And, you know, because I was still thinking about it. <laughs> and then I thought I forgot about it and I was traveling after that and I came back and no, while I was traveling, I was called by the, the superintendent for the position to say they're running behind and they'd like to set up something with me in early September. I said, no problem. Mm -hmm. And the moment I walked into the space, I felt as though this was mine to lose. And each step of the way, there were three levels to the position. Each step of the way, I just felt this is what I'm being called to do. <clears throat> and so when I received, I negotiated my salary and I, you know, I negotiated everything. I felt I was led. Let me put it that way. I felt I was led into the space. And every step of the way, I was being guided how to be, who to show up as. And I don't think I've ever been so honest and forthright in a job, in a job interview as I was in this one. Wow. So they knew what they were getting when they got me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think tapping into that sense of who I am and being honest in that sense showed up actually. My first experience with that was when my grandmother made her transition in 1995. I think that was a divine moment because I really got present to ancestor mm. and my grandmother guides me. I am closer to her now than I was when she was quote unquote alive. Um, and then my second kind of pivotal experience with just tapping into energies and letting me know I'm being guided also was my first trip to Ghana actually. And for some reason I made the decision to um, transfer my funds from, I paid my MasterCard, but not my visa. <laughs> and so when I got to Ghana, I couldn't use my MasterCard. <laughs> I think I had like about $200 on my visa or something like that. And, um, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm in this country for a month. What am I going to do? And then a silent voice just said to me, um, speak to your bank and let them know what's going on. And I called my bank and Royal Bank and I said, okay, I'm in Ghana. You know, I have money on my MasterCard but I don't have any money on my visa for the month. And they extended my, they gave me $4,000 on my card. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 
that's all divine intervention because in Ghana, I saw my mother, I saw my grandmother. It was just something about the space and the energy that my sense of faith and spirituality grew and has been growing since then. So, um, and I would say, and also in Ghana, when I was at the door of return, the door of no return and the door of return, I was given the message mm. to tell our stories. And that was the moment that I trusted mm. that my poetry is divinely given to me and it is not for me to hold lightly. It is not mine, but it has been given to me. And so mm. those are some of the spaces that my faith has certainly um, guided Brilliant. me. Again, rich and inviting us into worlds that are fresh and new. Um, so we have Kara and uh, Sunita on the call. Um, who would you want to invite, Jacqueline? Invite Sunita, please. Hey, Sunita. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you as well. I'm glad to be here. Um, uh, well, my name is Sunita Kragbe. Uh, I uh, currently live in Ghana. I was born in Paris, um, France, and um, I'm half Ghanaian, um, and the other half is French and Ivorian. And um, I, um, I've been back in Ghana for six years now. Uh, and uh, before that, I lived in, in Europe for about 10 years. Um, I, uh, I'm currently in the creative space. I'm a creative director. Um, formerly in the corporate art industry, um, was there for a number of years um, and decided to branch out three years ago to become an entrepreneur, uh, set up my own business, which is a creative hub that I run from Ghana um, with uh, members um, across the globe. Um, so basically, it's, it's, a, it's a bit like a co-working hub. But um, we, we preach creative thinking. Um, so it's a very laid back, unconventional space uh, whereby we facilitate um, um, encounters, meaningful encounters, uh, work we provide work facilities, and then we also um, have a, a range of activities um, that are ongoing throughout the year um, to facilitate networking, um, social uh, expression and, and basically the space is a platform for creative expression. So we also have the only space to our members who are um, freelancers, entrepreneurs, um, and so on and so forth, uh, do partnerships with them to uh, make the space available for whatever idea, business idea, project, or um, event um, they want to host. Um, so the space takes different forms based on the need. Uh, and uh, I recently joined the OWL platform. So uh, Basecamp is not part of OWL. Our faith has had an impact on my whole life. I haven't had a, I've had far from having a simple life. And uh, I've, I've, um, I've had, well, uh, to be honest, I've had, as we speak, uh, five near death experiences. And um, they've all been very uh, drastic and, and with some high level of trauma, um, mm -hmm. physical trauma, um, psychological trauma. Um, and they've all come in different forms, you know. Um, some examples that um, I've been through the Civil War in Ivory Coast. Very few people mm -hmm. know that about me. My family has been through um, quite a number of things. Uh, that was before we moved to Ghana um, and faith carried us through that, you know. Um, there, are very, there were very intense moments that uh, I don't know yet if I'm comfortable sharing, but uh, mm -hmm. very, very intense moments that um, the average person or in most people in their lifetime don't even go through or hear about or encounter. Um, you know, being faced with death so many times and uh, um, like staying optimistic, staying positive, um, hoping for the best, you know, and, and knowing that um, um, God is gonna carry me through this, you know. And um, 
also, uh, I mean, we've had a home that's very grounded in faith. Um, that's also been uh, a good, a good uh, example to follow all these years. Uh, but uh, I think recently I myself went through a very traumatic experience again. Uh, quickly, you know about it. I'm still going through it. Um, I was in a, I was in a major accident, um, and that was like what two months after. It was on Christmas Day, and it was a month, not even a month after. Um, I won my first um, personal award mm. um, because uh, we, had, we, we had had a few company awards before that when I was in the agency too. But uh, that was my first award. Um, I won a CEO award, best, um, sorry, most respected CEO in the incubation industry in Ghana. Um, and uh, barely a month after that, uh, didn't even have the chance to celebrate. I think it was two weeks or three weeks after that. On Christmas Day, I was sandwiched between two cars while standing in a car park. Um, and uh, so the other car smashed in my spine. Um, and I mean, the story is so complex um, and so random at the same time. And uh, basically I couldn't feel my legs for 48 hours. Um, and, and well, I was admitted through December, January, uh, discharged um, and February, March, um, requires so much assistance to move around uh, gradually started like regaining use of my legs but I mean the whole time it was it was me thinking um will I ever walk again properly and um I was already facing medical challenges before this this encounter so um but the whole time I kept telling myself that at the same time I was like there was no room for um um there was no room for negative thoughts, you know, and I felt like my future was was too bright for me to be to be in a wheelchair at this age. I I promise you that that was the thing that carried me through the whole time, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not done. I have so much more to achieve, and and that just can't be it, you know. So every day it was faith. Every day it was faith. It was faith that this is just a phase. I'm gonna get through this. It was faith that um. This wasn't my time. That's why I'm still here. Mm. Um, it was faith in the fact that I'm going to walk again. You know, um, it was faith in the fact that I can do it. Um, and I have a mission to accomplish. I'm not done with my purpose because I discovered my purpose about three years ago. Um, and I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm literally a walking miracle today. I'm not done dealing with it because I have terrible days where my mobility mm. is reduced um, to barely 20%, but my, I would say most of the time I'm good. Um, so, and it's fate that keeps carrying me through. So I have a lot of people that tell me, the few people that I know, um, some of the instances, uh, I mean, some of the stuff I've gone through, I like, how do you stay so positive? I'm like, <laughs> there's no other option for me. That's how I see it. Like, I mean, you know, complaining about it, uh, whining is not going to help or get me better, you know, so faith keeps me going and, and that's the only option for me at this point. Yeah. So, um, that's that. Thank you. Blessing, Sunita. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I mean, definitely in my experience of you, you epitomize this conversation. So thanks for sharing. Um, Kara. So Sunita, thank you uh, first for just sharing your heart and your spirit and being who you are. I am moved to the core. Like this is, I'm very clear that the journey I'm on right now in my life, uh, as far as developing my life purpose is becoming clearer by the day as I get to know everyone that's involved with the collective project that we're working with. I prayed for a year and a half for a way to get out of Mesa, Arizona. It is nothing in compared to the journey that you went through, Sunita. And for me at the time, it was a very painful experience. I was very afraid. Um, so me, for me personally, it was my faith, my connection to my ancestors. My dad was a Tuskegee Airman. I, I hold that proudly. 
and I am, have many talents thanks to Kim and um, you know, uh, right now in my life, uh, as far as developing my life purpose is becoming clearer by the day as I get to know everyone that's involved with the collective project that we're working with. Um, I, it's, it's no accident that I, uh, I prayed for a year and a half for a way to get out of Mesa, Arizona. It is nothing in compared to the journey that you went through, Sunita. And for me at the time, it was a very painful experience. I was very afraid. Um, so me, for me personally, it was my faith, my connection to my ancestors. My dad was a Tuskegee Airman. I wear that, um, I, I hold that proudly. Um, and I am, have many talents, thanks to Kim, and um, you know, uh, that many things that I can do that um, to be able to be beneficial to an organization. I've never gotten my worth for as far as my value. Um, and I'm certainly wanting to bring all of that to the project that I'm working on with Byron, with the Kwanzaa project. I actually know Byron. I've known him for more than 30 years. Um, Glenn, I've, we're, I've went, had the privilege of working with Byron and Glenn when they first came up with the 90-day uh, enhancement project. My company built the, um, the first website that they had. Um, so there's lots of different things that I bring to this. I'm a writer, I can edit, I can draw, I paint, I am a photographer, I'm a videographer. There are many things that I've done that I use those skills off and on periodically. And I'm really looking for a way to benefit children, particularly children of African descent um, in, in I'm, I love working with kids. I love kids, you know, I, I just, um, I, I worked with the children in the Southwest for three and a half years. Um, I was accountable for a transformational program with, for them and their family, families. And I was the most effective leader in that program in the world at the time. And I'm like, yeah, let me bring all of what I have mm -hmm. in that area of being able to be with real with kids. And it's delightful to see what happens for little human beings at an early age when they get access to who they are in the world, just faith that has me know I'm in the right place at the right time. I believe in turning poison into medicine. That is what makes me strong. It makes me grow. I mean, when we look at what fertilizer is, it's, ooh, right? I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's garbage, it's poo and look what yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just very excited and uh, blessed to be with all of you. So thank you. Thanks so much, Cara. And uh, Julius jumped on. Julius, you might have missed the intro, but I think I cut it. We're, we're going to move on, but I'd love you just to introduce yourself. You're obviously part of one of the, um, with the OWL and our dance contribution. Um, so if you could put your camera on and tell us, you know, basically where you are, what you do, and yeah, maybe something to do with what role faith plays. Let me let you, you know, in a nutshell, see if you can simplify it uh, into a couple of minutes. Okay. <clears throat> well, just as people said, I'm Julius Yaokwansa from Ghana. Um, I'm presently working in Kumasi, that is the capital city of the Ashanti Kingdom, as a cultural officer and um, an artistic director of the resident dance company of the Center for National Culture here in Ashanti region. I met people in, I think in 2016 in Accra. I was in my final year when I met Kweku. He came to watch my final year dance production and somebody introduced him to me. And from there we have been brothers and have been working together hand in hand. Yes, yeah, so basically this is what I would have to say about myself. And Kweku has been an instrument in some of my works as a choreographer. He designs music for me. And presently I'm working on a project for next year, which is a very big project that I'm looking forward to it. And I'm sure that Goku is going to also step into that fire with me so we can work to achieve this together. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. Julius, definitely. <laughs> is actually welcome on board on the project. And I wish oh. to have all of you down here in Ghana to witness it live as it is being staged. 
Yeah, when is it, Julius? Because I'm sure Kara, Jacqueline would love it. Sneeta is around too, so. It's, it's coming off on the 3rd of July, 2022, in Sunyani. And again in August, in Techiman, all in the same region. Wow. The central part of it. Yeah. And this, this project is powerful in terms of ancestors. Give us a little bit of an insight into how ancestral um, understanding plays a role in, in Boia and your work. Yeah, so it's, it's about the rise and fall of the Bono Kingdom. Bono people are actually the civilization of Akan ethnicity in Ghana, the largest ethnic group in Ghana. Um, so they're telling the story of where they emerged from how they put themselves together before the invasion of another Akan group who departed from them, came to attack them, and then their kingdom collapsed into the present uh, settlement of the various Akan groups in Ghana. So it seems to encapsulate the emergence of the ancestors from wherever they came from to where they settled um, the activities, both commercial and economic, before um, it collapsed. Powerful. Thank you. Mr. Kwanza, you're about to really shake, up, shake things up in the history books. I can feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. And yeah. One interesting thing is that these, these stories are not written down. They are, they are untold history. They are with the people. So I think that I would be the first person to bring it out to the general public and to put as well. Wow. Yeah, it's very complicated, very delicate, and very controversial. <laughs> but I'm willing to face it. I'm seeing it as my um, BIG at the moment very biggest yeah. impossible yeah. yeah it's huge it's massive looking forward to it. yeah me too powerful thank you uh, julius so the question to think about while i'm getting the whiteboard up is what do we do as collectives as a as a, as a group of people with all different types of religious beliefs and non-beliefs and all the different kind of ways that we come at the world what do we do as a collective to build, build our faith, knowing that it's actually something that cements collective? So I'm just gonna give you a minute just to think about that by yourself. If you have pen and paper, feel free to go to paper, um, but, but it's just a moment for you to consider. And I'm gonna open up my whiteboard uh, and capture a few things that you have to say. Other things that we as collective can do to deepen or strengthen our faith? Well, I think we're already doing it. Um, mm. I think this right here, um, this conversation in the first place and um, this medium of sharing and, and um, um, elevating each other or supporting each other um, already is um, a mm -hmm. platform um, for strength uh, um, to you know, lend an ear to a brother or a sister um, to also understand that we're not alone um, um, through everything we go through and also to get ideas, you know, get fresh ideas um, uh, and uh, also use those ideas efficiently within our respective circles, our respective communities and, and uh, the teams we manage um, the teams we manage and the people that depend on us. Um, so I think this is this this meeting is actually a perfect example to answer your question. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Anita. Anybody else? Anything to add to the, uh, what Anita said, or anything different? Yes, we're cool. Yeah. What I see is um, researching into it, into our belief or believing, and the willingness to accept and embrace it. Then mm. um, it's to share with our colleagues, which I think, of course, is what we're doing already, like she just said. 
the one thing I will add to what has been shared so far is that there's actually <clears throat> this notion of celebrating the contributions. Because I think so often in other spaces, the contributions are often not celebrated. Um, so there's definitely creating the space and embracing and valuing and respecting. Um, and I'll, I'll say the different word, the different ways of thinking and being, um, because I think it's the diversity of thoughts. And even though there may be similar um, creative spaces that that we hold, there are also different ways that we hold them. And so I think just creating, respecting the diverse ways of thinking and being is important in the collective. And then mm. celebrating the contributions of whatever is added to that mix. Um, and there's something about somehow owning the space, all of us owning the space and not owning the mm. space from a sense of power but owning the space as a space of belonging, owning the space as a space of um, community. Um, and, and yeah, that for me is really quite powerful and important. Thank you. Can you repeat that? I love the way you couched it. More members owning the space as... Oh Lord, I don't remember what I say. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, I held it like, you know, like it's it, it it's anyway you know it's really funny because I feel what you said but I can't remember what you said which is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, those are things that are channeled through me and I don't yes. hear them. <laughs> yes, definitely. I I feel that. Did anyone else pick it? Anybody else come in and pick that or get the essence of what Jacqueline said there? Because I just got it as something around equity, but I but it was really nuanced and really couched. I loved oh. it. So I was speaking to there was about the diversity, diverse ways of thinking and being yes. and respecting and valuing that and celebrating the contributions that are unique. Because that I think is the power of collective. There's a unique element to it, but then when we put it all together, it works. Mm. Like when you have the right mix, the right, and it, I mean, right may be a quantifying word that's not mm. the best way to speak it in the moment, but there's something about when that recipe works and all the ingredients of that collective work, it comes out beautifully. Mm. Yeah, wow, I love it. And it is channeling. Whenever you speak, uh, Jacqueline, I am sort of, we're in the presence of ancestors. They're moving through your words Yeah, all the I time. know those are not my words. I know those <laughs> are not my words. <laughs> well, it's, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Ownership is a funny thing because, you know, it's, you're the channel so it, it, it always you know any channel there's a residue right when when something flows through a channel there's a residue and it becomes and part it takes of you to come back to hear what it's what is being said because then I have to now listen to say how do I embody what was said so it takes yeah 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 awesome Powerful. Anybody else? We have just another 10 minutes. Anybody else that anything that would support us to build and develop faith inside of collective, inside of the collective space? I just want to expand a little bit about the I am not alone piece. I think sometimes when, because I think beneath that is also. Um, Beneath that is also a clearing, if you will, that is created to say, whatever desires or dreams I may have had, I may think it's on my own, I think it's impossible. Mm. But when I'm part of a collective, I get present to how possible it is. I get present to the possibility of the dream. Mm. So there's something about taking it from, and, and that speaks to faith in itself where um, this thing that may be invisible in the moment, in the collective, I get to bring it to be, bring it to life, bring it to, um, with the support and with the space and with the encouragement, et cetera, I get to bring from the invisible to the visible with the support and, and go from that impossible thinking to I am possible space. Mm.
if you can keep up with my racy thoughts, go ahead. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's a, it's a nice challenge. It's a nice challenge. Uh, and it's also one where it, it, it helps me see how your words land and how they're filtered, because I realize some of them land in understanding, some of them land in, um, in the body. And some of mm -hmm. them, so if I think it, that it, part of it would be recalled through probably movement or, you know, it's really interesting how, you know, we, how much of what we hear and is stored and where it's stored. I think mm -hmm. that's, that, that's, a, that's an inquiry for another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but this is powerful. Um, I'll give us a quick recap of what did stick and what did come through the, the keyboard. And we've got, the one. these are the things that would support us to build stronger faith within the foundations of our collectives, is conversations like this, to have spaces that show we're not alone, spaces that elevate each other. Uh, research, and he said research into our, and into it, he said, but I just kind of wondered if he meant our heritage, and in his case, you know, our ancestors and stories, our, our rich stories that are our oral stories that are not written down. Um, celebrating the contributions. And I've, I heard that as also individuals that are alive and also ancestors. Um, creating spaces that, that, and that are valuing the contribution. So celebrating and valuing, holding and respecting the diversity of thought. And I, and I love that. This is where it got a little bit ancestral with Jacqueline. Um, all members owning the space. And then I really could see the pathway and, and you connected back Jacqueline to I'm not alone which beneath that was um, on my own I am impossible there's an impossibility about the big impossible goal the idea and in collective it becomes possible and these spaces collective spaces bring possibility into being um, and, and um, again you said celebrating the uniqueness of each individual and the value of each unique contribution. Um, so that's just a peppering of all that was said, um, which, is, which is really, really powerful. And I'm definitely gonna make sure I save that because <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake in the past. You know, I was like, oh no, where did it go? <laughs> so I'm picking save right now. There you Wait, go. Could I add something? Please, Cara. Um, yeah, I just, and, and thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry, her name isn't in front of me. The, the woman that was just sharing, what is her name? Jacqueline, Jacqueline Lawrence. Jacqueline, oh my goodness, thank you so much for all the gifts you just gave us. And as I was intently listening, um, what I saw was that uh, the collective is a space of acknowledgement and appreciation. Yeah. One thing that I has been invaluable for me in the challenges I'm currently dealing with is the constant acknowledgement and how much I'm appreciated for everything that I do because I, it just warms me to my heart. Um, oftentimes as a creative, um, I'm, I am just a very happy person. I create happiness. That is something that I've learned regardless of circumstances to do from multiple different programs that I take. And that is certainly not always appreciated. And unfortunately, or fortunately, that's a core part of what I am what I need to be creative to move forward, right? So without that, it becomes very difficult. Um, and so, yeah, with the collective, I find that invaluable. Lovely, I love that. That's, I, I love the openness as well, because I think sometimes it's hard for people to share what it is that actually sets the fire alight, you know? So like, actually I need that and it's given and it's provided, I become, I become, right? I become. So that is really powerful. So, um, so I got acknowledgement and appreciation, spaces that warm my heart and provide me with what I need. To become, and I love become. what you said. That, just leave, that was good, that end part. It's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Collaborations. Cara, there's more to come. We can feel it, right? <laughs> In Ghana. In Ghana, of course. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm gonna save that and move us back into the main room for our closing. So I'll stop sharing there. Great, excellent. And I don't know where you guys are, but if you if you can put your camera on to, for the last four minutes, it'll be amazing because we can then see your lovely faces as we check out. Um, and 
it's been a pleasure just to have this conversation and people passing through, Julius, Jacqueline, Sunita, Cara, Trevor, who passed through as well. It's been amazing. Um, and we are the final collective, you know, to host this space. So it is really does give me an honor to, that I would be selected to have that um, opportunity. Um, I would love us to close, just to again, repeat your name um, and say one thing that you, yeah, you're gonna gather, gather as a gift for your collective um, from this conversation. Uh, and as we land on the 1st of uh, January, 2022, um, having that intention, carrying that as an intention, your collective and your big, big I am possible goal. And anyone can start. Thank you for putting this, making this space available. Um, I, I need to see my beautiful brothers and sisters. I do. Mm. Um, and it's great to be here. I am very much looking forward to seeing you and being in your energy in person. That's coming. Mm. I feel it coming. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, yeah, it's just, I'm excited about our Kwanzaa celebration. It's just so, it's so great. So good, good. Thank you, Kara. Who would you like to invite to close next? Jacqueline. Hello. <laughs> I, I think what I'm taking away is um, being present to the presence, whether it is speaking about the ancestors or whomever one um, believes the source is, whether that's God, Buddha, Muhammad, whatever. So just being present to the presence that's within the space mm. and within us. Mm. Thank you. And thank you so much for hosting this. This is a great pick me up during, during I, was, I was trying to edit this morning and I needed a little bit of energy and this just gave it to me. So thank you. That's the power of the collective. <laughs> Um, yeah. Energy, add energy to that. Add energy. To that. Energy's going in the chat. There we go. <laughs> Who would you like to invite, Jacqueline? Oh, um, Julius, even... please. Julius. Julius. Are you there, Nana Bowia? Oh, maybe he's ducked, ducked away from the camera. So, Sunita, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Awesome. I'm here, I'm here. Unfortunately, I'm not alone, so I can't turn on my camera. Um, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this session. Um, I, uh, I really wasn't expecting to have such a um, heartfelt um, session today. Um, uh, but uh, Sunday is usually the day for reflection, and, and my home is also family day. So, um, I think it's, it, it comes in, it fits in nicely, you know. Um, and what I'm taking from this session is um, the, the idea of um, having a gift and, and having a purpose and, and um, not just living it out like into the world, but also um, transcending um, our gift into uh, or, or making sure that our, uh, the individuals within our, uh, our, our collectives benefit from our gifts um, one way or another. And uh, so that we're, we're not so tunnel, we don't have a tunnel vision, but we have more of like a holistic uh, view of um, what we're meant to do while we're here and how faith um guides us and 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 steers us in the right direction you know um and also the ancestral the ancestral approach um funny enough i haven't i have i have never to be honest i've never connected my faith to my ancestors um i've never thought about it you know i've never thought about it this way um i know the gifts i get from them I'm, mm. I'm aware about them, mm. uh, but I, I maybe I, I need to give them uh, more um, acknowledgement because <laughs> I've never really given them the time of day. I'm using those gifts, but I haven't really, um, I'm not digging deeper to understand where they came from, you know, and I see, I see how they, how they evolve through me um, day in, day out. So 
I'm grateful for that. So I'm actually grateful for the topic itself because um, it's a very new topic to me. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Sunita. Thank wow. you. Wow. Excellent. Well, it, who, whoever arrives are the right people, right, for the conversation. And so it has been a real blessing. I'm definitely taking away the opportunity to create spaces impromptu. I might make a habit of doing this from time to time and just see who shows up inside of the conversation. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> right? Um, and, um, you know, and what, and what that brings up for the person in, in that moment. Um, I'm, again, grateful to Dr. Byron for creating this space, uh, creating this project. I'm bringing us Cara. Cara, I can't wait again for you to be back in, be in Ghana. I say back in Ghana. That's probably because of the ancestors. I'm saying back in Ghana. <laughs> and um, yeah, and um, so we look forward to receiving you. And look, just have the most wonderful rest of your Sunday. Look out for the dance projects. Anita, there's dance projects attached to every single day of this, yeah. um, this project. And Cara has also been helping to facilitate that space. So look out okay. for those videos. Um, I've seen a few clips. It's looking amazing. Imani, Maury. Imani, Kweku, how are you today? Oh, I'm great, great. It's so great to finally meet you. Absolutely, wonderful meeting you for the first time as well. Excellent. So, you know, from Accra to where? Because you've been on the move since we started right. this project. Where are you now? Right, well, at the moment, like right in this particular moment, I'm in Lafayette, Louisiana. And awesome. um, I'm here doing some ministry and um, I have family here. So prayerfully, I will get to see all of them as well. But um, I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. I was born and raised. Um, and uh, so it just happened to catch me like today, I'm in. <laughs> You're in somebody, was saying, somebody was saying to me that in a minute it's going to be like how the kids used to watch the show where in the world is Carmen Sandiego I'll take it fantastic wow so what's had you traveling you know because um you know for me this has just been an amazing project the, op the opportunity to work alongside Dr. Byron Johns um mm -hmm. to just represent his work and also to mm -hmm. just get this spirit of collective into the Kwanzaa season. Um, yeah. But he, he, he was so excited when you agreed to come on board and he gave me a bit of a flavor of what you do. Um, oh, but I just wanted to, to meet you and learn more because, you know, as an artist <laughs> to another artist, it's just such Absolutely. a blessing. Absolutely. Yeah, so can, Thank you. Can you tell me a bit about what, you know, your background and kind of what has you moving around right now? Uh, I've been dancing since I was three. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am. But <laughs> I'm not even gonna try guessing. Good, a, a, a true lady never tells. So, um, but I've been dancing for a very, very long time. Um, I was raised uh, uh, primarily in a little city called Inglewood, who it's actually getting a lot of publicity now. Inglewood is on the map. So I started there and then my mom decided to move us on the west side. And um, I'll just say with that experience, and I started in classical ballet, I thought who Misty Copeland is today is who I thought I was gonna be way back then. Um, and I was well on my way, to be honest with you. I went to performing arts junior high school and high school. Um, I would just say that very often I was the only chocolate chip in the cookie dough, frustration for it to be that way. Um, so I started dancing professionally at 15. Um, and uh, I did go to school, go to college and everything. My mother was like not having me not. As a matter of fact, I booked my first professional um, tour before like three weeks, like I think it was like spring break of my senior year in college. And um, they wanted me to start the tour across the country in Florida. And I said, listen, I can't. I said, literally my mom will find us wherever we are on the road and kill me. <laughs> Maury was no more yeah no I would have been no more so no more tour no more nothing but I knew from a very 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 young age that I was meant to dance I teach I do choreography um, my bread and butter is being like a high school dance teacher which is wonderful I'm very very thankful there are a couple of women that are few well one of them passed away I had three of them three dance mamas and uh, they made the most impact in my life throughout like middle school, all the way up until college. That's mm. where the bulk of my um, 
uh, strenuous and most intense training came. I, I don't know how to say, I, I guess I'm, it's a fusion of dance styles that I, that yeah. I love. Um, my own movement inclination somewhere fall between like uh, lyrical, modern, I'll pull out the ballet um, and I don't know. Then I, I can do all the other stuff too, though. I was telling the kids, bucking down is easy. All the girls on the block when I was growing up, we could do all of that. All the girls could do drill team and all those things like that. It was the classical stuff, the ballet, the modern, Graham technique, Dunham technique, all those things. That's where it was like, yeah, but can you do this? You know, I could do all that other stuff y'all are doing. Can you do this? And I do a double pirouette and took me out, you know, or whatever. And they're like, <laughs> you know, yeah. well, that's, that's what it was for me. That's what it was for me. That's, Tell me about powerful. you. I was just so curious because when I watched the film, you know, mm -hmm. of you um, creating with on the young women, um, the, the the Kwanzaa piece, it was really. Um, I enjoyed the fusion. You know, I felt like there were some African styles in there. I felt some technique. You know, in terms of um, contemporary technique, I felt yes. the balletic too, and yeah. also there was a commerciality to it. So when you now talk about your your journey. It really does, you know, the work is so authentic to what wow. you've now described. Um, yeah, and so it's awesome beautiful to hear. to hear that. That's awesome yeah. to hear, thank you. For me, even when you speak, speak the truth of the work emerged out of your relationship to the lyric, to the, to the music. And for me, that is a statement of faith, right? It's like trusting that what God has given you it, what's internal is going to naturally flow out through yeah. that through that role that you've you, you've yeah. been given that's purpose right as well Nia Absolutely. so Absolutely. you know yes. I think that's beautiful you asked about me I'm I would say to to in all my work you know my work is a fusion of dance and music and then of um well well-being you know where I've landed in in my adulthood is that it's to do with well-being alignment yeah um so I, I have a collective called OWL and that was, you know, uh, the, this is really in the context of OWL that I'm hosting. And mm -hmm. OWL fuses three major passions for me. One is the arts and the performing arts. Yes. One is, another one is, uh, is um, wellness, holistic wellness. And the last yeah. one is transformation and personal development. Oh, and awesome. so, wow. okay. yeah, so that's, so that's OWL, that's my collective. And that's, that's the channel I use really to deliver a lot of my work, whether it's okay. soundtracks for dance, dance, um, companies, uh -huh. whether it's commissions as a as a creative director or as a choreographer, whether it's work as a as a as a, a facilitator of well being, or work as a facilitator of change or of learning, um, yeah. and so yeah, so my journey has really been in terms of dance has really been I'm a I, I'm, I'm a social dancer, you know, it was in the UK I was raised in the UK, and okay. so rave. And the culture of dancing outside and outdoors yeah, you know, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Was, That's awesome. was me as a as a baby going out and being you know being in that exploration zone and when i got to the club it mm -hmm. was all about house music or jazz like footwork yeah it was a foundation for me and my friend jazz oh, northern God. soul and yeah and oh, and then of course all about it <laughs> you got that right hi i'm maury edwards the founder and the director of moriography movement works because it does. Um, I am uh, the choreographer for the seventh day of Kwanzaa and that principle, the seventh principle on the seventh day is Imani, which is faith in Swahili. Um, I'm excited to present to you all this wonderful piece. It was an honor to be asked to do such a work. Thank you so much for having me to be a part of the collective. It's been wonderful, the process. Special shout out to Kiara Roberson, who is the owner of the studio where I sit and where we are dancing. Um, her, she, the name of the studio is Crucial Kids Dance Company and Dance Studio. A uh, special shout out also to my videographer, Mr. Derek Preston. Um, look forward to presenting this to you all and uh, some other things in the very near future. You can find me on Instagram as Ms. Maury underscore on underscore the move. Let me spell that out for you. M S M O R I underscore O N underscore T H E M O V E. Miss Maury on the move. That's me. So thank you so much. I look forward to you all uh, enjoying the piece. Be blessed.
for being a part of seven days of collective celebration. We hope you enjoyed the offerings. If you're interested in finding out more about any of the programs, please go to a place to be.org and tap the get in touch button, which is at the right hand corner at the top of the landing page. That button will get us a message and we will be in touch. We like to collaborate, and if there is a conversation or forum that you'd like us to support you in bringing forth, please let us know, and we will set up a time to dialogue.